Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and in this episode of From Behind the Barbecue Front Lines, I talked to Harler Harp from Harp Barbecue in Kansas City. This one is really great because I've been following and showing the progression of Tyler for the last couple of years, and this year was pegged to be a big one for him. He had... <laughs> I'll let him talk about it, but he had gotten a number of pits. Things seemed to be really rolling. He was packing it in at Crane Brewing in Raytown, and then the pandemic hit, and he had to change things. He took a step back. A lot of the restaurants took a step back. He ended up going to the Antler Room, which is one of the best restaurants in the country. He was doing pop-ups there. Again, I'll let him get into that. It was really interesting. It's really creative. In July, he might be doing some more stuff there but as of right now as of june 20th he is back at crane brewing he'll be there every saturday he might be popping up one more day a week there that's a strong strong possibility this is great tyler is really insightful he's extremely humble hardworking, passionate about barbecue knowledgeable about the shoulders that he's standing on the roots of kansas city barbecue the roots of texas barbecue and the food scene that is being created in Kansas City. I think you're really, really gonna love this. I think you'll get a lot of information. If you're a barbecue joint starting out or dealing with things during the pandemic, I can't thank Tyler enough for doing what he's doing as well as taking the time to share. This episode is brought to you by Treaty Oak Distilling. They're available at treatyoakdistilling.com or in Dripping Springs, Texas. Also AJ's Custom Cookers. That's ajscustomcookers.com. Check them out, give them a DM, get a quote. Amazing guy, amazing product he's putting out. If you're just listening to this on the podcast, I have a YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Kevin's BBQ Joints. I have a website at Kevin's BBQ Joints.com with tons of content, lots of cool stuff, putting out new things every day. I have a new website launching really soon, so stay on board for that. At the end, stay safe through this. Thank you for listening. Yeah, so actually, 2020, it's been a whirlwind. For, for everybody, so not just us, obviously. Right at the first of the year, or after Christmas, I bought Hellberg's. It was the first Harper big pit that he built for Hel- the Hellberg's. Okay. And so I bought that from Philip and Yvette, and I brought it back right at New Year's. So we, we were cooking on a 375-gallon cooker that I still have. So then we had the 375 and the 500-gallon the Harper. And then, yeah, about a month ago, I just got the thousand gallon that he built for me. So we were kind of all geared up, ready to cook as much food as we possibly could. We had some really big events scheduled, um, some big outdoor events here in Kansas City for the summer, the spring and everything like that. And that kind of went by the wayside. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so now we've got a ton of cooking space uh finally that we needed for the past year and briskets are nine dollars a pound and <laughs> uh it seems to be going up it's not that bad i think we were paying um 5.49 last week but apparently it's taken another hike this week so tough on everybody trying to sell meat right now oh definitely but it's also too i would think as we go on go forward at least for a while we'll be able to to teach the customers that prices will be higher if they want it. I, I think it's a shame you don't want to pass it. You have to pass it along to somebody. And I think it's going to be like that across the board. Supermarkets going to be like that eventually too, I think. And I kind of feel like people will still spend money on stuff they really want to spend money on. Sure. They're probably going to eliminate stuff that's not as important to them first. We're really kind of all in a weird situation right now because so we've been selling at the brewery for the past year. Yeah. And then the COVID, when it hit, everything kind of, you know, pumped the brakes real quick. And we had shut down before a lot of places here just because I wasn't sure. I didn't understand. I didn't know a lot about it. I didn't uh, know how much was being transferred through serving food or eating food. Um, And we would just cram. I mean, we were getting two or 300 people into a real small space. Yeah, yeah. And and at the time, uh, you know, we're in a brewery. The brewery isn't mine, obviously, and, and so I didn't want to put anybody else's name at risk for bad publicity, bad, you know, uh, media attention if, if we were to have a, a continue our barbecue pop-ups there and something were to happen, because like I said, we were cramming a ton of people into a small space. So yeah, we did, did they a, Did they shut down too for a little bit? Uh, they did, and uh, we were, so in the brewery I'm at, there's actually a food truck the brewery and then there's a coffee place as well so we kind of got four businesses there in one and we were the first to pull it like i said because we were bringing a lot of people in was the main reason 
And so we had actually, we'd stopped ours before anything. I think we were one of the first things in Kansas City to shut down. And then, the, and I told everybody by the next week that all the restaurants would be shut down. And that's exactly what happened. So we were stagnant for about 10 days and I was really just brainstorming and trying to figure out what's next, where we're going to go, what we're going to do. Um, so I had sent some messages to some buddies of mine here in town that are chefs, um, a handful, and just kind of said, you know, hey, uh, you know, anything I can do to help you guys, I'm willing to do it. I'm not, you know, looking to make money. I just want to help people get by during this time and, and make sure that the culture that we've kind of started building here in Kansas City um, as far as trying not just barbecue, but all the across the board with food that, you know, there's a really a group of people um, that are my age, a little, some are a little younger, some are a little older, but we're really trying to push the food scene here forward. And I think we're making some headway with that. And I didn't want to see all that work go by the wayside. So I wanted to help whoever I could help. So I sent out some text messages and about two or three le days later, Nick Golner got a hold of me and he is the yeah. executive chef and the owner at the Antler Room here in Kansas City which is one of the best restaurants in this city. Um, Nick has a lot of experience. He's cooked around the world. He's cooked in San Francisco and New York, and he actually worked at the restaurant Noma over in Copenhagen. Yeah, it's a little old restaurant. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, Antler Room is one uh, of the best restaurants in the country, I've heard. Yeah, and January, the last week of January, I went and spent a week with the Hellbergs, and the last week in February, I went to spend a week at Bodacious with Brian, his wife, Kimmy, and oh, their yeah. team. I've been fortunate. I got to work with Matt Horn. I got to work with Danny Castillo uh, from Heritage. I got to work with Brett. So I've got to work with a handful of people, uh, learn a lot. And so this year, with uh, working with the Hellbergs and then at Bodacious for a week and coming back, and we only, once we got back from Bodacious, I think we did one pop-up, and then the COVID hit. Then we went down to the antler room, and so I've been there for probably 50, 60 hours a week or more for about 10 weeks now. What are you doing over there? So on Fridays, we're doing sandwich collaborations. So I'm making pastrami's, and then they're making Reuben sandwiches with the pastrami. Um, I'm doing pork, and we're doing Cubanos. We're doing the smoked burger. That The burger's really taken off, and, and it's getting a lot of um recognition for what it's doing i think we we're all pretty nervous about the burger because chef i don't think he was super excited about the idea um so the antler room they don't have a lot of midwest traditional cuisine on their menu it's 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 you know more european based it, it, it's fusion food it's small plates turn and burn and so usually they don't even have a lot of beef pork or chicken on their menu it's like more fish and lamb and different things that are kind of unique to kansas city mm -hmm. i was kind of honored that they wanted to have a barbecue there and, uh, and it's then actually kind of up, if you think about it it's pretty genius to do for this yeah, time during this time at least too and it actually yeah. it opens up a window that potentially once this passes this there could be something wow. mm -hmm. yeah and and you know i got to give the credit to nick to that for his open-mindedness and um understanding that we were in a time where there was really no rules at the moment so let's go ahead and just let's just make the best food we can make food we would want to eat and sell that and so uh, we've had a lot of luck with that, you know, as far as getting by and everything and keeping our brand going and, and you know, re getting new customers and stuff. So we, we've had luck with it and we're going to continue to push it forward as long as need be. We're kind of in a weird spot because they started a bunch of construction at the brewery recently. And so it's just not inside the brewery, though they are doing some smaller stuff in the brewery, but there's a big trailhead for a bike trail that they're working on in the parking lot the county is and so that's going to take until october or so they're saying so uh -huh. we're just going to try to swim by however we can you know between the covid and the meat shortage and this construction it's just been kind of like one thing after another so you haven't done any brewery pop-ups since covid broke out or since no we sold a bunch of briskets yesterday for memorial day but we haven't done any full-on barbecue pop-ups in a while and we may change that again uh, we may do some on Sundays at the Antler Room, kind of just depending on the availability of the meat and, and how all that's going to go, you know, with people not um, working and everything. It, yeah. it seems like the first couple weeks it was going real well, and then it, it, it seems like it's kind of declined, and I don't know if that's because some restaurants are opening back up, so people that want to go out to eat, they are. And or then also, yeah, are, the fun, like, like you said, the funds, like people don't have their – now that it's yeah. real, they're realizing how long it might go on. Because Kansas City, are you guys at 25% for indoors or uh, not at all yet? 
We are at 50% oh. on the 1st of June. Oh, okay. So we've been, it's been kind of weird uh, with the county and the cities and there's been different directions from both. So it kind of just, I think Kansas City, I'm not sure exactly their plan. I know it's the county though. The county is moving to 50% on June 1st. Interesting. Wow. What's, yeah. what's the overall climate there? Are people pretty, are people wearing masks or people not wearing masks? Are people nervous or people itching uh, to get out? What's, what's funny is I work in the city and I live in the suburbs. And so it's like two different. <laughs> it's oh, I just, could imagine. Yeah. And so in the city, it seems like people are wearing masks and being safer and um, doing the social distancing more and uh, just kind of trying to play their part. And then out in the suburbs, it's kind of more of a I don't really care attitude. <laughs> so, I mean, you get both ends of it out here. And we just try to do our part to, to keep it going. And we, we wear masks when we serve food and we prep food. And, you know, like I said, we want to do everything we can from our angle to, to stop the spread and to, yeah. to be safe. So what are, the, what are the best ways to get a hold, to, to find out, uh, do you, are people ordering online? Are they calling in? How, or is it just walk up? Or what's the best way? And then are yeah, they taking so, it to go? Yep. So we've been doing curbside to go. Okay. It's all been ordering online through the Antler Rooms website. Okay. Um, so we've had the four, we have four or five sandwiches. We've been doing a smoked Italian lamb dip as well, which is really oh. good. Oh. And then, uh, so I, I've been putting sausage on the menu on Fridays as well. So we got about five sandwiches that we've been doing collaborations on. And then a lot of different sausages um, that I got to I got to give a shout out to Philip and Brian Bingham both because, you know, going down there and working this year, my sausage is really, uh, I'm really proud of it right now, where we've come from. It's been one of the most frustrating things I've ever had to do. And uh, I think the first week I got to Bodacious, or the first day I was at Bodacious, Brian asked me how fast I've made sausage. And I told him, I said, I'm not very fast. And he said, well, you better get started then because there's 50 pounds in the walk-in we got to do. So uh, he kind of threw me into the, in the ocean and, I, and I'm grateful for that because um, since then and just spending that week there, it seems like, you know, I've gotten a lot more confidence in the sausage ability and the execution. It's been a lot better as well. What great knowledge, like the, both those, the Hellbergs and then you know, Brian, like that's such great, like you've had, you have, and then kind of staging and working those other places with Brett and Daniel mm -hmm. and, and Matt. But I, I think that going to, and especially what, looking at the Instagram and Twitter feed of Brian, you know, he's a sausage, uh, like a little savant. <laughs> so it's, yeah, <laughs> I got to take the guys that work with me um to texas monthly barbecue festival back in november we'd worked all weekend sold barbecue and then immediately after selling barbecue we went we drove to texas at like i think we left about three in the afternoon so we got to austin about three in the morning okay. we've been working all week we get to austin at 3 a.m and we'd woke up about four hours later to go get in line at franklin because i actually hadn't been to franklin's restaurant i had ordered whole briskets from there. oh yeah i remember you brought it back to the hotel right yeah, yeah, but that was my first time, and so I got to take the guys that work with us to Franklin, then we went to the barbecue festival, and I think that their mind was just like, they couldn't believe it, just some of it we were getting to eat, you know, sausage from Tejas and Bodacious, and uh, at Valentina's, they put together this incredible burn-in and mashed potato dish we were getting to eat uh. from Blood Brothers Barbecue, uh, uh. so it was awesome to be able to show my guys kind of a lot of different things you can do with barbecue things that people are doing currently and just how good barbecue can be. That's so eye opening. And it, it's, I think it's eye opening for anybody, anybody that's watching this or listening that hasn't been to Texas when things clear, when it's safer, go, you have to go travel around and go from East to North to West go everywhere because things are different. They pull from their community or they pull from a, a heritage. It's, Mm -hmm. it's fascinating and even and even in one city just like austin per se true. you could have two or three barbecue joints that are way different so if you take you know valentina's and compare it to mickleway and compare that to leroy and lewis you know just there in austin you know and there's more but that's just a small sample of three barbecue places that are all three doing completely different things or go out to the switch dripping and then all of a sudden you've mm. got the cajun influence and then yeah you could just it's just and, yeah. and and just and to see the quality and it's it's nice that you i was i wanted to check in because i want i know a lot of people have asked me how you were doing and how things were going and 
I wanted to check in and at least see your face and see that you're okay. That you're, how's your family? Are you, are you guys safe? Yeah, we are. Um, dad just come back and started cooking with us about two weeks ago. So we're kind of um, limiting him more or less to being outside. Um, but he wanted to get back out of the house. My That's mom good. and him, they, they spend the winters in Florida. The huh. day after Christmas, they went to Florida. And the day they got, I actually had called them and convinced them to come back a couple of days early because of the COVID was getting crazy. And so they went home and, and quarantined and all that. And it had been probably, well, my dad came to Florida, or he came to Texas when we worked at Bodacious. So I did see my dad right before all that. But I hadn't seen my mom in like six or eight months or so. Oh, man. And, uh, so, yeah, that was tough. And we finally got my dad out of the house, and he's helping cook again. And, you know, like I said, we're going to keep moving forward as safely as we can and nice. play it by ear. Well, is there, to, to kind of wrap this up, is there any message you want to give people or give uh, the, the industry, anything you want to say? The, the, the scene in Kansas City is growing. It's changing a lot. I think in the past four or five months, I've seen probably six or seven offset smokers Nice. been drugged to Kansas City from other parts of the country. I know uh, one of the guys up here, he just got a Chud's pit. Oh. Uh, and so to where the past however many years, you know, we've been kind of cooking on old hickories and southern prides in Kansas City. Um, I've seen a lot of offset smokers rolling in here in the That's past make handful happy, of months. Yeah. yeah, and I'm excited to see it move forward. And there's a lot of guys that are really, really care about everything they're doing. And I think one thing we're starting to realize is that Kansas City is definitely a brisket city. It just we just kind of had to open their mind to a different side a of different brisket. Way. They <laughs> yeah, they hadn't seen before. So you know, now of course now we can't get brisket. So, but hopefully once you know this <laughs> meat shortage hopefully goes over. I'm really excited for the way that Kansas City barbecue is going. And like I said, I think in five years it'll be a different scene, and I think in ten years it'll be a totally different. Oh scene. yeah. So. And yeah, and, and you're one of the forefathers, which is kind of nice. It's nice that it's I and, and but you're you're you would never say that, so that's why I'm saying it. But I think that you, well, <laughs> the forefathers are the ones you know that everybody from Henry Perry to Arthur Bryant, you know, Without all the way to Aaron Franklin. Um, you know, we just want to continue to push it forward. Um, you know, it, you know, whether it be getting inspiration from a place like Leroy and Lewis who just, you know, the stuff they put out is always insanity or someplace in Los Angeles like Moose Craft or from Heritage or even from Horn or from Slab. Um, we try to pull from different regions, you know, and we've been doing the whole hog cooking quite a bit too that we learned from Zach Parker. So hopefully uh, it'll all come together at the right time for us. We'll find a building. We'll have a place to put all our smokers that I'm storing around the city and uh we'll be able to get going here before too long. But in the meantime, we're just going to keep trying to do the best we can do and um, help everybody get through this because that's what it's all about, community. And, and like I said in the beginning, I wanted—I didn't want to see Kansas City lose any progress we had done from elevating the food culture here. I agree. Well, well, thank you for taking the time and uh, thank you for doing what you're doing. And, and more so, I mean, like in 10 years, people will look back and see your passion and see that you are a big part of this This third wave or second wave of yeah. Kansas city style barbecue. I think that, you know, I don't, I'm not really looking for a lot of credit and stuff. I just want, to, oh, no. I just, I just want the scene here to, 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 to grow and to push forward. So no, and I think that, and that's what I love work. about, that's what I love about you is you, you want to see it evolve and you want to see it. You want to see what you're, you're seeing everywhere else have in Kansas mm -hmm. city. And I think that's, yeah, we should be commendable. a barbecue capital. And I think that we should definitely move forward as such. So, Definitely. Well, ha have a great, have a great week. Stay safe. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tyler. Thanks, I hope Kevin. you stay well.